Now we will cover what is called a Z-Stack. We're going to take a series of pictures through a vertical stack of our tissue. So we're going to focus on one level, tell the system to, be, to begin capturing images. It's going to capture images all the way through that Z-Stack, and then we'll have a complete set of images that we can then turn into a 3D image to manipulate, or we can turn it into a movie. To do this, we want to click on the Z-Stack tab. So we click on Z-Stack, and now it returns this volume that shows us uh, where we're going to set our beginning and end points. We'll focus over here on the screen. We'll go live. So you see a live image. Let's initiate the composite image. And now I'm going to manipulate the Z position knob on the smart bar uh, to select the, the point that's out of focus, beyond the focus, underneath where I want to begin. That looks like a good position to begin. So we'll come over back to the Z-Stack. We'll click on the black arrowhead for begin, and we'll tell the system that is where we're going to begin our Z-Stack. Now we come back over to the image, and we focus through the image. And this may take a while. We just continue to turn this knob until we've come to the top of the image that we want to produce the Z-Stack. And you can see the focus improving. And we will go beyond the focus point to where it's defocused just a little bit. And we're going to tell the system that is my end point where I want you to finish the Z stack. So there we selected now a portion uh, at the above point of the focal plane. We'll go back to the Z stack menu and click on the end bar. Now the system has told us it's going to do 57 steps. The size of each step is ha almost half a micron, 0.4 microns, and the total volume is 22 microns. We click on stop, and now we come over and we click on the start icon. And now the system is going to go back to our beginning point, and it's going to start collecting images from that beginning point at each Time. It's going to shoot a picture, make a digitized image of each plane 57 times through that 22 micron volume. You can see there's a status bar down here on the bottom, which is telling us that we're producing our Z stack and it's only done about 30%. So you can see if you increase your resolution on your image, if you increase the number of averages that you take per line or per frame, this is going to slow down significantly. So keep that in mind in terms of photo bleaching and how fast your cells are going to photo bleach because they're being hit by the laser continuously during this Z stack. So the system is almost done. It's at 93%. When it finishes, I'll have a movie over here on the right-hand side that I can then play. The system returns a whole set of icons here, which are for playing the movie that we've made. I can press play, and we can watch the image go through the Z-Stack in real time. So if there are features above and below in my tissue that I'm interested in looking at, that at I can see that with the Z-Stack. I can also grab this little frame on the Z line, and I can manually move that up and down. So let me grab it, and you can see that by moving this up and down, I can quickly see the different features that are in my Z stack. So Z stack is a very important way of slicing optically through a whole set of tissue and looking at specific features throughout that tissue. Remember that I can do X and Y in Z, I can do X, Y, and Lambda in Z, and I can do X, Y, and T, time-lapse, in Z. So I can create a Z-Stack where I do time-lapse at each individual step. I can create a Z-Stack where I can look at different wavelengths at each optical section in the Z-Stack. So it's a very powerful tool. Now that we've taken our Z-Stack, we have all of those images in our volume of tissue. 
We can make a 3D model and we can rotate this so that you can quickly see relationships between organelles and different organs and tissue that you're looking at. In order to do that, we have to click on the process tab. So we'll click on process. We're gonna click on 3D projection. So let's select 3D projection. And now it's gonna return our Z-Stack in a black and white confirmation that we could look at in the stereo series here. But I've already made a movie of this which will project on the next screen. So I'm going to go to experiments. I'm going to select the series that I used uh, to make this movie. And now we're gonna come over here to the right screen and you will see a 3D movie that I can press play on and you can watch this rotate in 3D. Now if we had done, say, 150 separate images instead of only 57, you would see a deeper Z-stack. But we can manipulate this again with the sliding bar and now you can see the relationship between things that are in your specimen. So 3D movie, 3D maximum projection is a very important tool after you've completed a Z-Stack. As we conclude our session today, we thought it might be important to do a little philosophical discussion of why confocal microscopy is important. Yes, we are doing fluorescence microscopy. A confocal microscope is a fluorescent microscope. But it's different from a standard fluorescent microscope because it can do what we call optical thin sectioning. Because of the pinholes in the microscope, the one after the illuminator that we can control and the one inside the microscope that is fixed, we're able to throw away light that is extraneous and not useful to us in producing an image. We're actually doing optical thin sectioning of our tissues by throwing away all the extra light above and all the extra light below the actual region of interest that we're interested in studying. So this is a very powerful instrument in terms of being able to do optical sectioning high resolution images. Now the benefit to you as a researcher is that you can use thick tissues. In fact, one of our workers here in the lab is examining roach brains. And so that person can put an entire roach brain, a very thick section of tissue on the microscope. And because of the optical sectioning capability, we can section all the way through the brain and make Z-stacks like we previously showed you. So you can use thick tissues. So specimen preparation is made easier by allow, allowing you to use thicker tissues. Another very important benefit of the confocal microscope is that we're doing live cell analysis. Yes, you can do live cell analysis on a fluorescent microscope, but with the optical sectioning on a confocal microscope, you are now looking at individual molecules being excited by the laser and the fluorophore that's attached to them in real time in a living cell. So it's a very powerful instrument for doing live cell imaging in real time. The lasers are important. Why? The lasers allow you to illuminate your specimen with one single wavelength. And so you can select specific fluorophores and new fluorophores are being manufactured all the time. So by selecting an individual wavelength with the laser, we can target and illuminate only that fluorophore that we know we're interested in seeing. Another important benefit, of course, is the time-lapse capability. You can do time-lapse on a regular microscope, but because we are doing optical sectioning with the time-lapse in, con in, in conjunction with that, you can see these molecules moving around in a single plane in real time over time. We can also do the Z-Stack as we showed you previously and build a three-dimensional representation of your tissue that you can manipulate in 3D space. Finally, when it comes to publication, as you know, having the most compelling images available is very important. And so the confocal microscope is no stranger to compelling images. Often your research publications appear to be more robust when you have these kind of images available to show. 
Well, we want to thank you for the attention that you've paid, for the time that you invested in watching these videos. We're looking forward to seeing you in the microscopy lab. We want to certainly thank the Keck Foundation, which has very generously donated not only the money for the instrument, but the money to produce this set of videos which you're learning from. We also want to thank Nikon Microscopy University for their support in allowing us to use some of the images at the beginning of the set of videos. We also want to extend our grateful thanks to Dr. Maria Elena Zavala, Dr. Paul Wilson, who are members of the biology department here at CSUN and who have been incredibly supportive in the production of this video. We also thank our videographer and expert filmmaker, Brian Smith, and finally, our assistant, Deborah Liz Beltran, who did a lot of the behind the scenes work that you didn't get to see, but you saw the result of. So this is Mark Armitage thanking you and signing off from the biology department at California State University, Northridge. The last second take of the day, okay?